I'm Naya. Um, my research was on synthesizing covalent inhibitors of contaminants. So for over 100 years, researchers have been looking into a mechanism or a phenomenon called the Warburg effect, and this um, effect influences cancer cell metabolism. So in normal cell metabolism, as you all might know, cancer cells, I mean, normal cells receive their fuel through a process called glycolysis, which is the conversion of glucose to pyruvate through a series of steps, which then gets further um, converted to acetyl-CoA and then enters into the Krebs cycle. However, due to the Warburg effect, um, cancer cells experience an alternative form of metabolism. So some of the things that cancer cells experience are increased glycolysis, as well as aerobic lactate production, which is the conversion of pyruvate to lactate instead of acetyl-CoA. And like how normal cells receive their fuel from glucose, cancer cells receive their fuel from glutamine. So how this um, cancer cell metabolism works is cancer cells convert glutamine to glutamate through an enzyme called glutaminase. And then glutamate further gets uh, converted to alpha-ketoglutarate through a deox through a oxidative deamination reaction. And um, as you can see, alpha ketoglutarate is a direct metabolic intermediate of the Krebs cycle. So what my research focuses on is finding or synthesizing inhibitors of glutaminase to essentially deny cancer cells their fuel source. And um, this will only affect cancer cells and not regular cells. So other researchers have also been uh, interested in this metabolic pathway, and they have eventually discovered a compound called BPTS, which acted as an inhibitor of glutaminase. And as you can see in the white here, um, that's BPTS, and it sits in the allosteric binding pocket of glutaminase. There is also a, um, a derivative of BPTS called CBA39, which is currently in clinical trials as an inhibitor of glutaminase. So my research focuses on creating derivatives of BPTS by attaching electrophiles on either side of the BPTS core to act as a, to create a covalent bond with the lysine residue on glutaminase. So what should occur is this electrophile should create a bond with the lysine residue on this pink protein. This electrophile should create a uh, bond, a covalent bond with the lysine residue on this cyan protein. And then an additional uh, molecule should do the same with these two pro with other proteins on the glutaminase enzyme. So um, the electrophiles that we focused on synthesizing were first an aldehyde electrophile, and then we transitioned to synthesizing a sulfonyl fluoride electrophile. So the initial step in um, creating our derivatives of BPTS was to create the BPTS core. So we did that by uh, treating the thiosemicarbazone with a diacid to create the thiodiazole. Then we focused, focused on um, creating our first electrophile to attach to the BPTS core. And so we, <clears throat> so we took a methyl uh, ester hydroxy phenylacetic acid and treated it with paraformaldehyde to get the uh, aldehyde on there. Then we took the ester and converted it into an acid. But when we tried to couple the, the, um, the acid with the BPTS core, um, there was no product by NMR. And so we had to abandon this reaction. We then um, started to synthesize our sulfonyl fluoride electrophile. So we took phenylacetic acid and uh, converted that to a sulfonyl chloride. We then converted the sulfonyl chloride to a sulfonyl fluoride. And then we coupled this uh, compound with the BPTS core. And um, our, we created, we synthesized a compound that was um, consistent with our NMR, our HNMR and our FNMR data. And this compound will then, will then further undergo um, a suffix reaction with the glutaminase enzyme. So we then needed to test whether or not our, comp our suffix BPTS molecule was an inhibitor of glutaminase. So we did that by using a glutaminase inhib inhibition assay. So here you can see um, the compound that this is the dose response curve of the compound that I had mentioned earlier that's in clinical trials called CB839. And you can see that it does, um, with increasing concentrations of inhibitor, does uh, decrease the uh, glutaminase activity, meaning that it serves as an inhibitor. Then um, here's the dose response curve for our molecule, our suffix BPTS molecule. And you can see it has similar characteristics where with increasing concentrations of inhibitor, it decreases glutaminase activity. And um, this is also just to show that with the, uh, with the, the addition of our sulfonyl fluoride electrophile, that there was no change in the potency of the inhibitor. 
We then need to see whether or not um, our compound created a covalent bond with glutaminase. So we did this by performing another glutaminase assay. So again, as you remember, uh, what we were looking for is for one of the electrophiles um, on one of our suffix BPTS molecules to form a bond with the lysine residue on uh, <coughs> the, the, of the glutaminase enzyme and for the other electrophile to do the same on the other um, protein and for another suffix BPTS molecule to, to perform bonds with the lysine residues on either of these proteins. So what we know is that one protein is around 55 kilodaltons. And um, what we're expecting is for the R compound to create a bond with the dimers. So that would be an, that would be a molecular weight of around 110 kilodaltons. However, when we actually performed the glutaminase assay, we did see an increase in the molecular weight, but it was around 250 kilodaltons, which, which indicates that, the, <clears throat> that our molecule actually cross-linked tetramers instead of dimers. So this means that while our molecule is a covalent inhibitor, it does not cross-link with specificity. So through this research, we were able to synthesize a SUFEX molecule. Um, we also uh, displayed that SUFEX inhib does inhibit glutaminase. Um, however, when we did perform the other glutaminase assay, we realized that there is a cross-linking pattern that's not in the orientation that we were looking for. So, um, Moving forward, what we're going to try to do is revisit the aldehyde electrophile synthesis and also try other electrophiles that are specific to lysine residues. So, thank you all for listening. And I'll answer any questions. Is the inhibitor that goes in between the pink and the cyan, do they have to? match the gray and the yellow or is it just one has um, yeah. to work so, really well and then the other is so they're both the same inhibitor like it's an identical molecule um yeah so like these two are would be the exact same oh. molecule um, can you crystallize it while it's cross-linked like this um so okay so there's a crystal structure of bpts however um bpts does not covalently bond um, glutaminase. So I don't know if that affects the, like, uh, the, how, if, whether or not you can get a crystal structure of it. And we haven't tried and there aren't any covalent inhibitors. So, um, I would assume you'd be able to, but I don't know if you're, if, um, if that's possible. I have two different questions. One is, um, I noticed the middle of BPTES has a lot of, like, um, strongly coordinating things. Is there something in the middle there, like a metal or something that's that this thing is coordinating around? Or like um, what is the middle part doing? So I guess I don't know. I don't think that the middle part has okay. So I guess the middle part is also affects like the 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 potency of the actual drug, like in, in terms of its like kinetics and like pharmacokinetics. But I don't I think it's the um since the connection between the lysine and the molecule is on like the benzyl rings, um, like the, the outside rings, that that's what's like, that's affecting the coordination. But um, I would assume that if you would change this, like the core part to different, you know, different groups or different functional groups or different rings, that might also affect the coordination. I was also just wondering about, I, I have never worked with sulfonyl fluorides before. Are they stable? Like how stable are they in water? Yeah, they're, they're very stable. Um, there's been like a new, like, I guess, uh, like discovery of these molecules that create suffix reactions with um, usually like lysine or amines um, and they're really stable in water. Um, and they're like, uh, they have a like, great chemoselectivity, so. Uh, I apologize for the, for the nature of the question, but if we have an inhibitor, why that, that it, I guess you showed graphs that it seems to work. Why do we need another one? So, okay. <clears throat> well, okay. For the, so when researchers discovered BPTS, when they actually like tested it as an actual drug molecule, it has really low solubility. So it's like has poor like drug like, like molecular properties. So researchers had to find a different, uh, more potent inhibitors 
um, of BPTS. And um, the difference between my molecule and BPTS and other like uh, subsequent analogs is that my molecule is a covalent inhibitor or was is supposed to act as a covalent inhibitor, whereas um, BPTS is reversible. Hi, I was wondering um, where is your active site and do you have a crystal structure of the protein lacking the inhibitor to see how much of a change there is to maybe identify what's going on at the center, the core of the drug? Um, so we don't actually have a crystal structure of of the molecule absent, um, or at least I don't, but um, we there what we did have a picture of um, BPTS in the like closer in the binding pocket where you can see like it's like arrangement with the lysine and the and um, and the molecule. So yeah, yeah, I was looking more at you were saying you weren't certain what the core was doing. Oh, right, yes. Um, I can show where that is. It's like right adjacent, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those lysines are in the unligand, ligand in the non-drug structure. Mm -hmm. The drug brings the lysines into it, okay. so they it's part of like a, a gating loop for substrate access to the active site, okay. which is adjacent. Yeah, so. I won the uh, one of the best poster awards in the research uh, symposium of Plano. Okay. <laughs> I know, right, right. Yeah, there was a cash prize, and Scott, uh, we we made a uh, a bet, or not a well. I guess we kind of made a bet if I would win that I would give him oh, hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm excited with the hat. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's the only presentation for today. Um, Liv is presenting tomorrow at four p.m., and then we have more presentations at noon on Wednesday and Friday. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little bit of a little bit.